In this clip, we'll learn how Mari uses the paint buffer to project the things we want to paint into our textures. Okay, so again, I'm using the completed project for this little crab creature, and you can find that inside your Mari files folder within your exercise files. Now, I've got all of the pieces except for his body hidden because we're going to work with just this piece in this clip. So, I've also selected my diffuse channel and I've created a new paint layer here that we're going to be working on. That way I don't destroy any of the texture that I've painted on the layers below. So, when you're painting inside of Mari, you don't actually paint textures on the surfaces of your mesh like you do in an application like ZBrush. Mari is a little bit different in the fact that it is a projection painter. So if you've ever used any kind of a planar projection inside of Maya, then it's basically a very similar thing. We're essentially collecting all of our texture into a planar projection, and then at some point we're going to bake that projection into our texture maps. And that happens from whatever camera angle we're currently looking at through. Now, let me go ahead and just illustrate this for you. I'm going to go ahead and grab my paintbrush tool here, and I'm going to come over here and select a color. We can do that either by clicking on this foreground swatch right here, and this is going to work very similar to Photoshop. We have a foreground and a background swatch, and the paintbrush is going to paint with the foreground by default. You can see I have a red color selected. We can click on that and open up this select color dialog. We can also come over here open up the colors palette, mix a color here. Personally, for quick and easy mixing, I like to use the color pop-up. It's the J key on your keyboard, and as long as you hold it, this little pop-up is on your screen. So we can come in and we can mix maybe a nice bright blue color, something like that, something we can see really easily here. And now what we can do here is we can come in and we can paint. But before we do, remember what we talked about when we talked about limiting our paint based on a selection. I actually don't have anything selected right now, so before I lay a stroke down, I'll temporarily hold the S key. In patch selection mode, I'll click on that body and release it. You can see it's selected by that little green outline. And what I can do here is I can come in and lay down a brush stroke. Okay, so we've laid down our first brush stroke, and now we have control over when that gets applied or baked into our textures. Before I do anything else in my canvas, I'm going to come over here to my projection palette. Now, this setting right here called bake behavior is important to understand because right now I have mine set to clear only and that's not the default behavior. Inside of Mari, this auto bake and clear option is the default. So what happens is this auto bake and clear makes it seem like you're painting on the surfaces of the mesh. So I've laid down my brush stroke. As soon as I go to orbit, you can see something happened and my brush stroke is now on the mesh. So what happened there is Mari detected a camera movement. So it immediately baked my paint buffer and cleared it. Now that's not the behavior I like. I like a little bit more control over when my paint is projected into my textures. That's why I switch this over to clear only. So when I switch that over to clear only, I can come in and I can paint in just like so. And now I can move my camera around and you can see that paint, it's continuing to live exactly where I put it inside the paint buffer. So maybe we wanted to put this stroke right back here, something like that. So now at this point, we could manually bake that paint. The way you do that is you tap the B key. But let's say we decided, oh, I don't like that paint, I want to start over or I want to modify it. Well, to start over, we would want to clear our paint buffer out. We can do that with this button here. This button will clear the paint buffer. Also, the keyboard shortcut control shift C clears out the paint buffer as well. So there is a lot of power in being a projection based painter like Mari is, because not only can we reposition the mesh, once we've painted some information into the paint buffer, but we can also begin to modify the paint, whatever that paint looks like. There are a number of tools over here, and we won't go through all of them. One of my favorites here is the slurp tool, and what that'll allow you to do is sort of smudge paint inside the paint buffer around. So you can see how we're slurping that paint around inside my paint buffer. 
We also have uh, this grid warp option, which essentially means that we drag and draw a selection around that paint. And Mari puts a spline grid there, and we can control how many divisions are in it up here inside of our tool properties toolbar. And we can actually take these points on the grid and we can begin to deform the paint based on the grid points. I'm going to go ahead and clear that out for right now. And we could also come in and blur. So again, there's several different tools for modifying paint inside your paint buffer prior to being projected down into your textures. Let's go ahead and clear our paint buffer out here. I'll go ahead and click that button here. And you can see no more paint in the paint buffer. Now, I think it's beneficial for you to understand what exactly that paint buffer looks like, because essentially it really is just a plane that lives between the camera and the mesh. I'm going to show you here the zoom paint buffer tool. It's the Z key on your keyboard. We'll select it. It's the little magnifying glass here and I'll just drag to the left and initially it looks like we're zooming out but what we're really doing is not just zooming out on the mesh but zooming out on the paint buffer itself. So you can see there are four corners. It's basically a perfect square but we also have things like resolution and bit depth down here. You can see mine's set to 16-bit and 4K. These are things that we have control over. Not only do we have control over the texture resolution, as you saw over here inside the UVs, but we have control over this projection that happens into those texture maps. We can control that over here on the painting palette. If we come down here to this little rollout for paint buffer, you can see here there's a few other little things we can twirl down, but there we go. Now you can see my paint buffer size, my color depth, uh, and several other options here in terms of controlling the paint buffer for the project you're working on. Now I've zoomed out on my paint buffer. I'm just going to come up here and reset it, and that'll zoom me back in. So the paint buffer is really something that takes a little bit of getting used to if you're coming from other 3D painting packages. But once you get used to it, you will find that there's a lot of power and a lot of control and having the ability to paint into sort of this two-dimensional plane and then project that into your textures. Now, in this clip, we've started to sort of open Pandora's box in terms of how we create textures inside of Mari. We've learned about the paint buffer, but really this is only the beginning because in the next clip, we're going to continue this conversation and we're going to begin to learn about two of the most powerful tools for creating texture here inside of Mari.